This is my Road to Rank 1 series, where I take a brand new account and bring it all the way to Rank 1 in the world. Last season, I was able to make it all the way to Rank 4 in the world, but I couldn't get to Rank 1. So I'm going to be trying one more time this season to get all the way to Rank 1 in the world. Hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm playing in the second position. Let's take a look at this board. So blue's in the first position. Well, let's see what I would do as blue. I think it's worth considering the 348. The 8410 is actually surprisingly good with the sheep board here. There's also the 5810. This is an interesting board. There's also the 5611 or wheat in the middle. And the wheat's actually surprisingly scarce on this board. In terms of ore spots, it seems like the 843, 6311, and 5611. Those are basically the ones that exist. If you take the 5910, you can actually get into the ore spot if you do road, road. Or just, you know, starting road down here, build road, build road, and then settle on the 612. That's actually another good idea for another spot. Is the 693 ever good? It's okay. If you double up this 3, it's okay. It's not bad. Okay, it takes the 843. That makes a lot of sense. I actually really like Blue's decision to point left. I mean, you have to point left if you go here. Double amp on this ore is really good. And I think I'm actually going to take the 8410 here and skip out on the ore, which seems a little bit weird. It's either 6, 5611 or it's 8410. The 5810 thing is decent, but the problem is you don't have any good ports. Like the brick port is kind of meh, but the 8410 has two very strong ports, the 3 to 1 and the sheep port, which I really, really like. What will I get if I take the 8410? I think someone's going to take this. I could see a world where someone takes this too. I can see these spots being gone, like one, two, three, four. And 8410 leads what gets what, like 693, which is honestly pretty good. I mean, yeah, like what does 8410 go poorly with is the question. If I get 5910, it's still playable, especially if I can get on the 612. If I get 8510, still playable. If I get 5611, I'm happy. If I get 6311, yeah, 8410 is definitely the best pick at second position. As first pick, is this the best pick? I'm not sure. I would certainly heavily consider 8410 as first pick. Yeah, I think I would. But I'm not sure if it's, there's not enough time to truly figure it out. And I'm not first pick. I should only be thinking about second position. So I think it has to be the 8410, and I think you point left for sure. It's just, uh, it's hard to go wrong with this. It's a very consistent pick with very solid ports overall. Okay, the third position does take the 5810. I think this is very strong. You know, it's like a brick, wood, and sheep. But the problem is slightly crappy ports. But Orange can solve that just by, you know, going another spot with ports. And one interesting thing that Orange can do is Orange might be able to take the 6311 and point their road aggressively right to try to cut off blue. And uh, this way they might actually be able to get the 3 to 1 port. And I think that the 693 is going to be taken by someone else. There's actually no free road spots for blue to take this 411. That is like a risky move, but it's also pretty heavy payoff since if you can get on the 411, you know, you get another ore spot and you get a 3 to 1 port, which is really, really strong. And you do get a cut off blue too. So the 3 4 is decently strong. Okay, so green decides to take the 5611 point right. I think I like this pick quite a bit because there's a pretty good chance that 31011 will be open. I mean, who takes the 91011? I don't see anyone taking the 91011. Since I think that someone takes a 693, you know, you know, let's say green. Now there's a lot of spots that are open, you know. There's a 2910, 4911, and 31011. And basically, it relies if someone goes on the 4911 or not since if someone does go on the 4911, green gets super boned. In fact, actually, I could take the 4911 just to bone green since that destroys the 31011 and 2910. So I can either do that, or I can decide to play nice and simply take 2910 point left, and then decide to give myself some space to build on the 4911. But I think blue might actually take the... Yeah, actually, no, blue, blue would take it instead. I don't know, I don't know. Since now orange has to make that decision, does he actually take the 6311, or does he simply take the, you know, 5910? You know, just double up on the wood brick. I don't think orange should take the 5910, just because, you know, you do get the brick port, and you do get the 3 to 1, but I feel like it's a little bit hard to play with wood brick and sheep only. I mean, you do get to build on the 612, but I think it's hard just because you're not close enough to connect, and then you're also going to be fighting against green. But 5910, I can't see a world where it does work for orange, and then I simply take the 6311. And I'm very, very happy with this. You know, I get the split wheat, strong ore, strong sheep with a sheep port. Uh, you know, I also have a 3 to 1. 4911 by orange. Wow. So there's two moves here. It's either the 6311, which I think is fundamentally like very strong. You know, you get the strong wheat, you get strong ore, split sheep, expand, expand, uh, city this up, and I'm very happy. Orc and city 6311. I have to make that decision. And then I become a happy camper. Do you ever take the 5910 though? And then what? Well, like push basically blue to the 6311 here. It feels so awkward. I play the 5910 and then I basically build to the 612. I mean, this is actually playable, the 5910. But I don't think it's the right move because I think it's too much of a road race. It's clear that orange is going to be going for road and green also might be going for road. But I think I just have to take the 6311. And I can't point my road right since if I point my road right, blue simply takes a 5910 and instantly cuts me off. So I have to point my road left. If blue is smart, I think he should actually point his road left over here and when he takes a 5910. And I think what blue should try to do, I think blue should actually try to plow me all the way to the sheep port. That would really, really screw me over. But I don't think blue has a foresight to see to actually cut me off to the sheep port. I mean, I can defend against that, just a tad bit too. 
let's say if I'm playing with a super, super strong player who is going to totally plow me to all the way to Sheepport, uh, one thing I can do is I can actually take the 6 3 11 and then pull my road right, and then he does 5 9 10 point left, and then he uses his starting road to go in the 4 11, and this way it burns a road so he can't plow me to the Sheepport. But that's like next, next level thinking. Only like top 1% players do that. And I mean, while I am like, you know, in the top 100, I don't know if I respect my opponents enough to do that play. And it just looks stupid. I think this is just an overall more consistent idea. I, I think that's getting too fancy, trying to point right to induce a cutoff. And, and I think there's a good chance, yep. And a blue can just point downwards anyways. Okay, let's let's just play it. So uh, three rules here, Um, you know, blue immediately drops a road down here, which makes sense. Blue's going to be very strong in this game. The wheat's going to be kind of scarce. Well, I know orange is going to want it. Okay, I do think I can just pass here for now. There's nothing to, yeah. I could do like a wood for brick trade. That might not be bad with orange to do a wood for brick trade. Or I can just try like a wood for ore trade with green, but I don't think he wants it right now. Uh, maybe I could, okay, that, that's a city. That's good. Now green wants, green drops the road since so the three rolled. 11. Now I'm dangerous of getting seven out. If I roll a seven, what do I do? I'll be dumping for the city and I'll extort for the wheat or ore. So two rolls. Now I've got to make a decision since I didn't roll the seven. Do I upgrade the eight, four, 10 or to upgrade the six, three, 11? Oh man, what a tough call. The thing is, if I upgrade the 6-3-11, it gives me strong orbit-sheep ratios. I really think it's good. The biggest problem is that the 6-or becomes a big, big blocking target, and then I become sad, and I can't do anything. But upgrade the 8-4-10, I have better and more consistent ratios, but I'm going to be, you know, road settling on this 3-1 port, or road settling on the sheep port, and that makes it so then I get solo blocked um, on the 8 sheep, because, you know, I'm now I'm tripled up on the 8 sheep. I think this is a little bit better for now, even though I am vulnerable to the 6-or getting blocked. I think this is the best move. I'm not sure. This is... I'm not sure. I just have to hope for no early sevens. Okay, good, good. Okay, I got the six before they rolled a seven, so it's not blocked. Now I need to be hunting for wheats. Let's do two wheat. Let's do two wheat. I'll do two wheat. I'll do any two cards. I need two cards here. But honestly, I'll take a one for one. I need, I'll take any one for one. Two for one, I'll do. Damn, damn. Okay, that's too greedy. That's too greedy. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's way too greedy. Way too greedy. I should have just taken the one for one. I was like, who else has wood in this spot? But the five just rolled. I'm such an idiot. Did the five roll? No, it was... He had the starting wood. That's that's what it was. It started to have the starting wood. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I definitely should have taken the wood for wheat trade since it just allows me to simply uh, buy dev card here. Um, There's a brick for... So this is a settlement over here. Is GG green either way, they say. Uh, I don't think so at all. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now there's an 11 that rolls. There's two wheat in green's hand. And this is a good spot to try to extort green. Yeah, let me try to extort green here. Okay, orange says yes, actually. Or, or, or actually, no, no. Yeah, green says yes. So if I want to try to get two wheat here, who do I think is stronger? Green? Green's actually doing pretty good here. I just wanted two wheat so I can try to buy two dev cards. I think it's a good chance that I might get two wheat from orange here. So I get a wheat from orange, and then I should be able to trade this for another wheat with green. There we go, and I buy two dev cards. Yep, yep. And I do want to be robbing green, obviously, since they're in the best position. So I buy two dev cards. Two knights is pretty good. Um, so now this is strong, adequate defense for my six ore. Okay. And that spot also, it's like, you know, it's online, so there's no table talk. But instead of trading me the double wheat, you know, letting me steal one and trade for one, in that spot, my opponent should simply work together and just be like, hey, no trade. Sorry, bud. Uh, like, okay, they block the 10 wood, steal a sheep from me. Cool. Okay, the dev card. And eight rules. I probably have to now be playing a knight card. Do I actually play a knight card on the wood? Or do I actually defend the uh, the 10? I'm going to be getting robbed anyways, and the spots I actually want to defend is a six. I don't know if I actually care about defending the 10 wood. It's kind of useless. Uh... Okay, so nine, there, there's the brick on the board. So now blue has brick. Green has also a little bit of brick. Um, okay, there's even more brick on the board. So if I, I can extort orange now, and I will gladly do so. And if he says no, I'm just going to be hunting for it. I'm uh, just robbing from orange. I might not need to do that if I get my wood stolen. So we'll see. So this, this is exactly why. Since he's going to do this, and probably rob from me, right? Okay, I was going to say blue non-steal for non-steal. Good, good. Since I'm saving the knights specifically to defend this. So I'm going to do this, and if Orange says no, I simply just put it on him and I steal from him. Up to you. Okay, I typed this a little early. I should have uh, played the knight first. And if he ignores me, if he basically, within 20 seconds, if he doesn't respond, I'm simply just going to knight him. And so he has a high concentration of brick, and, you know, since the nine just rolled, he settled. Blue says, okay, in this spot, I'll simply just do this. I think I actually robbed green instead, because green actually has access to ore. And green's going to be my ore weasel competitor. While I think orange actually has a little bit of a tough time, um, I get a brick. Nicely done. And I trade a sheep for a brick here, but I think this is a good spot for blue to scam and just lie to me. Oh, he doesn't lie to me. Cool. That's that's very kind of you. In this position, I simply should just drop a road here, I think. I buy a dev card first. I don't need any other cities. Another knight card. And then I drop a road, I think. It makes sense to drop a road to the sheep port, right? So this way, I become like an orbit sheep monster. Or do I simply want to... I want to secure the 3 to 1 port now before it disappears. Both of these are valid. I, I think this is marginally better for me, so I'm going to do it. 
Yeah, I think that's that's an okay move. I didn't pay attention. Okay, eight rolls. So there's even more more sheep on the board now. I don't think there's actually any wood on board for him to tr trade for it. So you should just pass. Yep, yep. Okay, there's the wood. And now he doesn't need any more trades. And everyone's actually got wood. The fourth ones and drops a road here. And doesn't have a knight card. Unless he wants to save it for the uh for this spot here. A ten is rolled. So there's a lot more brick on the board now. I'm hunting for wheat. Three rolls. Oh, this is... Like, dude, everything is working out, man. Everything is working out. I just gotta drop this. There's nothing else for me to do, really. I could technically play an aggressive knight to try to steal a sheet to buy another dev card. But that's a little too... uh overzealous and i need to be saving the knights defensively so the nine rolls here now orange still has a high concentration of brick in hand but you know you can't really do anything 12 rolls okay and i got the settlement now since the five roll nicely done uh a cool cool uh in this spot if i want oh i could always steal from blue here okay let's try to trade we for sheep i don't think this will go through but this is the problem with me settling here since if i settled here then technically could uh you know three for one Ooh, blue says yes i'll take this I'm not too afraid of blue, really. Ooh, that's a mistake. The reason why that's a mistake right there is because it gave blue a one-for-one -one city. So I'm going to reframe that right there and say it in chat. I gave blue a city. And by me reframing that, like, oh, I gave blue a city. Okay, I didn't give blue a city. Well, okay. Um, I'm going to say two or two wheat. Uh, just to let the table know that he's very close to the city and that it's worth breaking the city from blue. And I've got a stack of three knights now, uh, which is very, very good. So, okay, I got two more dev cards. Do I ever get a second city here or do I consistently buy more dev cards? I think it's worth it to buy more devs. This is going to be a heavy D card game. So there's Blue City. Dev card? No, he's one card off. He's one card off, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to roll first. And there's no reason for me to play a knight. I'm at seven cards. Eight rolls. In this spot, I think I need more Ds, really. I pop, pop, and I end my turn. I think that's the best play. Let's buy a dev card first. If it's another knight, if this is the case, then yes, I have to play a knight card now. And now I've got too many knights. And I think in this spot, it's actually not bad to do this. I feel it's like such a weak block since everyone already has sheep. I could do this, but this is a little too focused on a single person. I think this is a fair block. What if I do something like this to force one of Green's devs since Green just bought a dev, you know? So I'm forcing that dev to reveal that dev card. But it doesn't really block jack shit. It doesn't do anything. And I'm going to be stealing from Blue here, hunting one of the ores or hunting one of the sheeps. So I think this is probably the play. Or a sheep. A sheep. And now in this position, I guess I buy another dev card, huh? I really wanted the ore so I can get a city, but, you know, another dev card is not bad. So now I've got four knights. With four knights, do I buy another dev card? Do I simply enter, go to zero cards? I think that's not bad to do this, right? Since zero card meta, just make it so I can get a zero card so my opponents can't rob me. I don't know, let's just buy another dev card. I think it's fine just to empty out your hand and be efficient. Another knight. Holy shit. Seven knights is actually pretty bad here. Just because now there's a high concentration of VPs and monos for my opponents. And I'm going to be playing an aggressive knights. The problem with seven knights is, you know, I don't need seven knights, first of all. But second of all, like, imagine the threat levels I send off to my opponents, right? Like, oh my gosh, is Red just about to win the game? Uh, but in reality, like, no, I'm not even close to winning the game. I'm actually very far off. It doesn't even help me say anything. Because if I say, listen, guys, I have seven knights. My opponents believe me then it's terrible because then it's like, what the heck? This guy's got seven knights? Well, it's time to go ahead and start robbing the hell out of him or start buying out the dev card deck because there's a high concentration of VPs. So roll seven, nine rolls. In this position, I think it might be worth it to actually play a dev card again. And like now I look super scary to all my opponents, right? But aren't my opponents blocking me anyways? I don't, I don't know if this is a right move, but I also don't want to be stuck since I can only play one dev card per turn. It's either the eight sheep or maybe something like the 11. 11 feels awkward. And who is my biggest threat? I mean, green is at six points, I think. They can't take largest army from me. I don't think they have a very hard time taking longest road. Blue might be able to take longest road here. I, I'll just block blue, I think. I'll just block blue. And I'll take one of their orders. I think this is fine. Since the way they win is if it three rolls and they get another city. But if three rolls, that means I get another city. So I think this is a fine move here. And plucking one of Blue's ores is never bad, I don't think. Yeah, I'll t or, or sheep. That's also good too. I'll take one of the sheeps. Okay. Ten rolls. So even more wood brick now. Do I take this trade? Okay, Blue says yes. I mean, there's not much I can do. If I say yes to that trade, it doesn't really do anything. Because, you know, they traded Blue over me, I think. Since I look way scary compared to Blue. But that is basically a city for Blue, which is... I really don't like this. Yeah, now Blue's doing very, very good. I mean, just look at Blue's position. They're going to get the city on their turn and then drop another road, which puts them at six points. And if they take road, they're at eight. Why well, I'm only sitting at six points. You know, with four knights, of course. But I, I look scary, but I'm really not. I think maybe instead of blocking the eight sheep, in that spot, it might have been better to block the four. We mono seven brick. Okay, that's kind of useful. Seven brick. Uh, useful for me, but it's terrible for him. I mean, he gets a city, but I'm still not afraid of green. But... It's worth noting now green is basically dominating me on the sixes since he gets two sheep, two ore. I only get two ore. 
So he basically gets two extra cards than I do on one of those. Okay, I'm going to play another knight card here, I think. Let's roll first. Eight rolls. Do I play an aggressive knight card just because I've got four knights? Do I consistently buy more Ds? Orange says he's willing to give me the wheat. I would have given you the wheat. If that's the case, I know that Orange has a high concentration of wheat, but I think that since they would have given it, they have two wheat. So in this spot, I think I might just play an aggressive knight and steal from Orange, but it feels weird since I'm stealing from last place. And Greed can certainly still do a lot in this game here. Let's play an aggressive knight here. And let's do this. I'll block the five. I think that's okay. I'm thinking about blocking the five or the four. The idea behind the five is that green still has a VP. Take road. They're at eight points now. They settle for nine points. So green's actually doing pretty good in this game. I could also block the 11. No, actually, let's block the nine. Let's block the nine. And the brick is just all burned. Orange is going to say no here. Okay. Oh, he says yes. Oh, shoot. Got right of time. No, no, no. I did the colonist thing. Dude, that's so, that's, that's so unlucky. So basically what happened right there was Colonist only extends a timer, I think, for three actions. And because of that, I missed wheat for ore trade. If I got the wood for wheat trade, I literally have a city in hand. Getting timed out right there is actually really, really bad. And, oh, actually, no, no, no. The reason why that happened is because I played the knight after I rolled. So it didn't extend after. I really hate that. I think that should give you more time after you do an action like that. But, you know, what can you do? At least I did seven out here. Um, And so what happened right there is well, even worse, right? I literally, Orange got a city and then I lost a city. That's pretty ugly, really. I, I mean, I do want to steal the, the brick from Orange here. Okay, so now Orange is going to have two bricks and one wood. Okay, so when he drops a road like this, this tells me it's not a road building. I've got to roll first. No eights, please. Six rolls, okay. And now in this spot, I'm going to play another knight card. And I could steal from green. Uh, there are six cards here. I really want Orange to take road, so I don't actually think I want to steal from them. And I'll take from blue instead. Yeah, since Orange has got two brick. Okay, cool. And then I'll take from blue because I want to keep green over eight cards. Cool. And I'll trade wood for brick. Yeah, this is good since I want orange to be able to take road here. So now with this, I'm going to get a city. Do I get a city or do I get D cards actually? It might be wrong. I'm going to port one set for this. I can't time out again. That's the that's the worst move. Do I get a city in this spot or do I buy dev card? I think a lot of people would say buy more dev cards here. A city versus... No, let's get a city. What are you talking about? Let's. Yeah, yeah the cheap port. This is just too good. Screw it. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm just going to drop this. And I know that blue doesn't have the road building. It's fine. Just do this. Just do this. No, shoot. That's bad. That's bad. Since I, I now uh, Orange's hand is stuck with three wood. They don't have enough to connect. I really wanted them to connect. Okay. So the eight rolls. The person I'm scared of the most is actually green. I think they can potentially take road. I want Orange to connect here. There we go. Now Orange actually has enough. They've got three wood, three bricks uh, in hand and a sheep. So they, they should be able to connect um, here and settle. But if they connect here, that seven, they have double settle here. That could bring them up to nine very quickly. So if it, basically, if they get a combo roll of like nine plus like two, that's pretty scary. Seven rolls. This is a pretty good for me. Let's see. What do I want to block? I mean, this guy has a bunch of roads in hand. Do I want to mess with it? Or I can simply jack from green. But green's at six points. I don't think they can take road. Let's jack from orange here, actually. Because I think as soon as orange connects road, they're going to be at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight roads. Uh, and they're going to settle very quickly. So I think it's actually orange here. And I probably get a wood brick and unlikely, but I get a sheep too. Brick is good for me. I get the brick, which is good for me. And that spot, the most optimal move, you extort orange for a wood. And then you steal a brick from green and you settle for eight points. But I think simply buying another dev card isn't bad here either. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine too. Let's just go and hunt for the uh, dev cards. Road building. Okay, that, that, that's, that's why I was afraid to drop the road last turn, but I thought it was efficient to just drop the a wood brick. Anyways, whatever. The road building is actually pretty bad. What did I do with the road building? Road building means I should probably road road here, or do I just do I decide to cut off blue? What do I do with the road building? So this is a lot seven points for this guy. I mean, maybe it's worth stealing from green because he's actually at six points. He's going to be at a hard seven points. And then he actually has strong potential through with the six balls. But I mean, it's a six rolls. I also benefit a lot. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, this is not good. Because he's at seven. Okay, two ball. I might be worth stealing from green now, playing an aggressive knight trying to steal the wheat from green. Let's see, the things my opponents think I'm so scary, but really I've got seven knights. Uh, and I'm actually not scary at all. Okay, there's a, there's a sheep mono. So that means there's still a lot of VPs inside the deck. What blue should do, he should try to do Hail Mary. Well, either one, he should try to cut me off. But I think he too, this is when blue should try to buy all the VPs from the deck. And like, you gotta assume that I don't have any VPs and then just gotta, ooh, I would not be trading this. I guess as orange, makes sense since it gives you a settlement. That's why orange is doing it. It brings orange as eight points. So it makes sense, it makes sense. And then for blue, it helps him buy more dev cards. It's a good trade, it's a good trade. A lot of people say, like, you know, whenever opponents trade, they're like, why would you do that trade? But you've got to really track the hands with precision and then think about why are they taking that trade? How does it help them? Or what are they not seeing? How can you exploit that and everything? Uh, you know, I can't really take this trade. Ooh, I think I might get plowed here, question mark. Or blue should try to connect. Blue should try to connect here. I, I was saying I, he might plow me this way. But if he plows me this way, it's totally fine too. Actually, in this spot, it's worth it to play an aggressive knight, steal from green to steal their wheat. 
Actually, no, it's not worth it because the sheep is all gone here. I could try to extort green for the one wheat, then steal sheep from blue. That's being a pretty fancy though. But this is pretty bad, the fact that blue is doing all this. Because if blue connects... Uh-oh, yeah, this is another dev card. This is pretty bad here. Nine rolls. So this is actually a critical move. I could either play a road building here, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere, or we can play a road building all the way here. And the idea of playing here is to prevent blue from connecting all the way through here, since if he connects 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and that beats out Orange's longest road. But what if I want blue to connect because I want to induce a road race between Orange and blue? That's stupid because, like, Orange right now has a tough time winning, but, uh, you know, blue doesn't. So if he takes road, he can be at nine points, knowing that he just bought two Ds. And there's a high possibility that this two VPs inside the deck. So I think breaking up the roads and picking it so blue has to build a hard way is actually not a bad move at all. Yeah, actually doing this is not bad since now blue can't connect anymore unless blue connects all the way through here, which I doubt he can. I mean, it's not impossible at all. He just has to drop three roads. Or he can simply drop the road over here to defend the extra settlement spot. Got no VP here. Blue says. Maybe he's got road building a year plenty? If that's the case, I think I'd do this, because then I'm not as afraid. I just pass here. And I can't really say anything here, because I can't say, oh, I have no VP either. Okay, so now Orange is at 8 points. They have a settlement for 9. And actually, this is pretty bad. This is really, really bad. I should probably be playing aggressive night stealing from Orange soon. Uh, I can't tell them if I have VPs or not. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Okay, I have to say this, but only if a 7 rolls. Because I'm very, very, very scared of Orange in this spot. I've got 1. That's fine. I'll let him steal from me. It doesn't really matter. The, the wood doesn't matter too much. Orange is saying he needs a VP, but that's actually not true. Since in this spot, right, I don't have any VPs, right? So I'm afraid Orange settles for nine and just simply just drops. Uh, so I'm telling Blue to basically connect so you can try to induce a road race between Blue and Orange. Since when Blue tells me, oh, I actually don't have any VPs, uh, you know, this is when I do this. Yep. Okay, cool, cool. Once again, I don't have any VPs and I'm actually very afraid of Orange here. I think I'd still do this, and I'd still rob from orange because he's got a weak question mark. Well, if blue takes road, then they're at seven, potentially eight. I think it's still orange, since they have got ore in hand. I think it's still this, since this, this is their money roll. Actually, it could be the ten. The ten could actually be the better block here. Nine's not bad. I think if nine hurts orange more, and that's what I want to do. I'm going to do maximum damage to orange here. Get a brick. Brick is useless. I don't really do anything with this. I think I just want to hurt orange as much as possible and give road to blue, which puts him at seven points and eight. And then there starts to be a road competition. So I'll just do this and double rough orange here. Actually, I'll do this. I'll do this. This is a little bit more fair. That could be wrong. It's a thing. It might just be the 10 brick. The eight sheep doesn't block uh, anything, but the sheep was modded and the eight hasn't rolled yet. So I'm preventing my opponents by settling by doing this, but it has to be orange for sure here. Got the sheep. That's cool. And I don't ever drop a road. Like the wood's rare. I just got to pass here, unfortunately. There's also a good chance I get monoed too. I think it was a mistake to block the 8 sheep and I should have blocked the 10. Not because the 10 just rolled because that's thinking results oriented. But I think in general it's a little bit better. And I think what happens now is Orange can settle and uh, or City, which is even worse. And that's pretty bad. Okay, that means Orange has 2 ore in hand. Uh, Orange has 2 ore in hand. So since they, they're ported for ore and they're ported for ore again. So I just got to keep that in mind. Another 5. 2 for 1. Can't do that. I can do 1 for 1. Uh, I can do... Actually, I'll do... Maybe I'll do this... I, that's a mistake. In that spot, it's actually better for me to give two cards just so I can get insurance. That's a mistake there, but it, it, it's okay. Five rules. Uh, a bunch of extra wood on the board. This is pretty miserable. My hand is totally bloated. I think in this spot, I've got a port for a wheat, question mark. I just got to do this. Okay, blocks this, steals an ore. Unfortunate, since now Orange has three ore in hand. Actually, they might have the city. Eh? Do they have a city? Since the two rolled along... Okay, so they got three or one wheat in hand. So now blue has to get road. Now that orange has a city for sure. The good news is now um, blue has longest road. So take road. And also, what's really nice is by blue taking road over here, technically I have all the infinite leverage on blue. Since if he takes road, I can break that road whenever I need to. So if blue actually gets too far away, I can really destroy them. Uh, there we go. So now the good news is if that didn't happen, since I think blue's at eight points now, like if I did, that didn't happen, basically orange would then be at nine points since they have a city in hand. So now I've got to play this dev card here and I'm looking for a sheep. Green's at eight points here. Uh, I'm just going to take the sheep here. There's no reason to uh, argue with him because green can get to nine points very quickly with just double VP here. And like, let's say if green rolls any 11, he pulls two VPs and he just wins the game. So the question here is to simply settle for 8 points, because if I simply settle, it does activate my 3 to 1 port, which is good since I, it lets me start unclogging my wood. But the problem is, I think there's such a high concentration of non-knights. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff inside the deck. 
one road bidding has already been drawn, which is the crappy card. So I think I have to go popping here, although I really, really want the dev. But also, like, settlement just helps me clean up the game so much more, right? And I think I'm going to go with the dev card here, since I want to defend and can keep control of the game. Another knight. Oh, I, my plane is taking off. I've got two minutes. Is that a good or bad thing for me? Oh, that's that's so bad. I think green wins the game here. That's so unlucky. 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 Green's going to pull two VPs. I need a seven. Seven, 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 seven. Ding, ding. No sixes. No seven. If green pulls two VPs and wins the game here, which there's a high chance that happens, ugh, green's at nine points. Green's definitely at nine points here. Yeah, that's not good at all. Okay, wheat for two bricks. Cool. Actually, I shouldn't be saying green at nine because it indicates that I... this Blue's at nine too. He's also got the settlement. Oh, he's got, okay, so he got road building. So take away my settlement spot. That's fine. I don't really care about the settlement spot. What matters is I need to draw the VPs. Well, he doesn't realize he can take that away from me. And now I have to play an aggressive knight card on my turn, right? I've got to do this. And I gotta, and the reason I gotta play an aggressive knight card, I need to take away green's high concentration of wheat right now. I gotta block this to prevent green from buying more devs. I, I think maybe the nine brick last turn might have been a mistake. So let's do this. Get the wheat. Okay, cool. No sevens. Oh, God dang it. That's bad. That's bad. That's real bad. But I don't think it matters too, too much unless like a three or five rolls and green road settles to win. Do I settle, pop, or do I simply pop first? I pop first. Let's see what I get. Another knight card. That's so unlucky. That's so bad. That's so bad. Oh, shoot. Okay, I need to make sure orange can extend and take back road. Let's just do this. Uh, I gotta continue popping since I need to make sure, like, the deck is... That's so unlucky. Two Ds. Seven. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm hoping... No, 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 no. Don't buy dev cards. No, take road. Orange, no. I'm hoping that orange would try to get 14. Since orange said, basically, uh, like, you know, they're about to take off for a flight, so I have to hurry up since I'm pay playing too slow. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. And especially since green didn't play, play a knight card either. That's so unlucky. I literally drew 10 knights. No VPs. That's actually really, really bad. I think he embargoed me. Why? What? Oh, geez. He just road buddings. That's GG. That, that's year plenty. He just, he wins. Or he pulls a VP here. That's so unlucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. No. No, he wasn't paying attention. That's so unlucky, man. He gets the two VPs. I got 10 knights. Oh my gosh. I mean, I think I actually, I, I stand by my decision to not settle over here because like I have to continuously buy dev cards because I have to be the person who sucks out the VPs. The draw just ended up happening where I didn't get the VPs. And like I told you as soon as Orange pulled those two, he was at nine points and knew that he has either mono or VP. And I was like, right. And, and that's why I'm like, this is very, very bad here. Uh, I think my setup was actually really, really amazing here. I think just, uh, you know, getting 10 knights is a little bit inefficient. Uh, unfortunately. I wonder what I could have done better. I think that this decision to not settle, I stand by that decision firmly. I don't think that was, uh, this was necessary. Because I needed every single dev card. Like, buying 10 and not getting any VPs sucks. Did I need to give more robs to green? But green wasn't a threat until you got that perfect sequence of rolls of the 11 and 6 rolling. And before that, I wasn't really afraid of green. But as soon as that sequence went off, then I'm like, okay, this is very, very bad. But I, I guess I should predict that sequence to happen more because one of my keystone rolls is a 6. And for 6 to roll, you know, uh, it also helps out green. Green also has a similar amount of wheat tiles for me too. And like the thing is, I don't have to be worrying about orange slash blue that much because if I can really extend the game and fiddle between you know, orange and blue, then the main threat is basically green. The only case where I lose is, you know, literally this case, theoretically. Unless, unless like, you know, let's say orange forgets to extend and then blue is able to pull a VP or blue was not lying. Yeah, as soon as blue said he didn't get a VP, I didn't think he was lying. I thought that like, he was telling the truth. I'm like, this is probably bad. He either got like a mono or road building. That means there's even the higher concentration of VPs in the deck. If you just look at the dev cards, literally the last several dev cards are all VPs. I mean, what, a total of what, 19 dev cards were in the deck? So that means there's three VPs left inside the deck. I guess that's the thing with Orbeez Sheep, right? You're literally playing a luck-based setup. Because when you play Orbeez Sheep, the basis of your strategy is to buy a high proportion of dev cards. But dev cards, you don't know exactly what you're buying. Like, while if you do like a wood brick setup, you know exactly what you're buying. You know every single time you drop a road, you know exactly what it is. But, you know, a lot of times I'd spend an Orbeez Sheep hoping to get any mono, any year plenty, any VPs. And I wouldn't get that. And I out-purchased dev cards um, by my opponents, like a high, high, high amount. I mean, I bought a total of, what, 11 dev cards compared to my opponents' four. So I, I certainly did out-buy a lot more dev cards to try to, you know, negate the luck. 
but even so like you know i didn't buy enough because ultimately the dream is if you buy 25 then there's you know five, 25 dev cards you know buy out the entire dev card deck yourself then there's no luck at all you know exactly what you're gonna get but sometimes you can only buy out you know half the deck and still get no vps because that's the luck of the draw that's that is a dev card strategy and that's one of the weaknesses is you don't have 100 percent control but you know that sucks i thought i had this game locked down but I ended up uh you know in last place at seven points which is a little bit unfortunate but you know what can you do it's just uh oh, it's the nature of the orbit cheap position anyways hope you guys enjoyed and uh i'll see you next time bye bye